Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny, and welcome back to a FNAF news video. This is exciting. Even though I guarantee you've already heard of this news before, I'm gonna go over it anyways. Yeah, I'm finally covering the news on the FNAF movie. A day late, a whole 24 hours late. Sorry, boys. But this is exciting, so of course I, I just had to cover it. Scott finally gives us a filming date for the movie, as well as like nine or something s scrapped scripts for the movie. It's insane. So I want to go over it. I want to give you guys my thoughts on it because there's a lot to talk about here. So let's not waste any more time. Like, subscribe if you're new. Let's hop into it. So Scott completely debated us yesterday saying bad news about the FNAF movie. So a bit of backstory of why I didn't cover this yesterday was because this was posted three minutes before one of my driving classes and I read the title. I didn't have enough time to read the entire thing. I just read the title and the whole rest of that class I was just so disappointed because I, I didn't read the whole thing. I was worried that the movie wasn't going to be made anymore, that Scott had to start over, find a brand new company, but thankfully, uh, this is filled with a lot of great news. Hi everyone, before we get to the bad news concerning the state of the FNAF movie, I wanted to share a brief history of the FNAF screenplay. It's been a long road, so let's take a look at some of the screenplays that have come and gone over the years in no particular order, or feel free to skip to the end really quick to see the bad news, and then come back and enjoy the list. Winky face. I feel like Scott has trademarked all of the emojicons, like the smiley face, the winking face, the angry emojicon. It's just like his thing. It's his signature thing. Some of these came from big studios, some from big directors, some from me, and some from other hired writers. I gave the screenplays a name and I'll include a brief synopsis as well as what ultimately led to each screenplay being rejected. Let's get started. The F screenplay. Big old F in chat. So the basic setup is a group of teenage troublemakers break into Freddy's and chaos ensues. Although a pretty basic setup, there were a lot of odd choices here, which only got weirder as the story continued. The story ended up with our protagonist in a secret underground animatronic factory that was designed that was designing robots for the government. Um, and then again, another emoticon. Scott loves his emoticons. This is interesting. So the verdict, of course, what the frick, strayed way too far from the source material, tossed. I'm so glad that this got tossed because if we found out that Obama location was going to be a canon thing in FNAF, that would've just been weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad he tossed this one, revealing that William Afton, I'm presuming it would it would have been William, um, made the, again, based off the underground facility, I'm guessing the fun times, made the fun times for the government? <laughs> would be a bit strange. Uh, kind of like some Iron Man type stuff going on there. Plushies take Manhattan. Now, I feel like people forgot about this, but Scott talked about this like two years ago on uh, Daco's interview, and I'm so glad this got scrapped because it is just insane, right? So the basic setup, plushies take Manhattan. The problems, uh, plushies, they take over Manhattan. And the verdict, it was burned with fire, as, as it should have been. Not much to talk about here. Um, there's two ways that I see that film going is with Plush Trap, and a uh, army of him or actual legitimate Freddy Fazbear plushies like this guy just taking over Manhattan. I yeah toss that. The random Charlie screenplay. The basic setup Charlie and friends sneak into Freddy's after hours to retrieve a lost toy. Now you may be thinking oh Charlie and her friends it's probably just a book but as it turns out although sharing names of familiar characters from the series these characters had nothing to do with their game and book counterparts, so I have no clue where they were going to go with that if they are not Charlie and her friends. So, while featuring familiar elements of the games, it seemed too loosely based on the game and lost a lot of its impact because of it. Felt like a random bag of FNAF elements with no real stakes. Meh. I'm, gl I'm glad he tossed this, again. Um, well, we did know that Scott originally had the idea of making the movie about the books. I'm so glad he's going with the games. Because while I think the the trilogy, right, the book tr trilogy of Charlie, John, all those guys, um, it, it could have worked. It definitely could have worked. But, and again, we're going to get into the Silver Eye screenplay right after this. I definitely do not think using the names and elements of the characters, but not you know, having it be the characters themselves, it's, it's such a bad idea. I'm so glad they scrapped that. So, again, moving on to the Silver Eye screenplays, the basic setup, Kira and I both worked on three versions of the Silver Eye screenplay. So technically, this one screenplay was a total of three or four. 
over the course of about a year trying to find the right approach to the story from the first book. Like I said, he was planning on making it about the books, but thankfully, he wanted to focus more on the games. Problems! These were the first attempts I made myself to write a screenplay after realizing it was going to be difficult to find someone else who understood the lore well enough to do it. Unfortunately, it also meant that these screenplays suffered greatly from my inexperience at writing. Even Kira, with her writing expertise, could not save them. I'm so glad that Scott had the, the right mindset after a full year of trying to get a silver eye screenplay down i'm so glad that he moved on again the books it would have it would have worked i'm not gonna lie i think it would have worked but i feel like more people will will know the story of the games so this took a lot for scott again after a year after three or four scripts of the silver eyes it took a lot for him to say you know what, screw it, we're going with the games. Although these had some good elements, I ultimately decided to focus on making a screenplay from the games and not from the books. Again, I just talked about it, great idea. The pawn shop screenplay, this was interesting. A kid who watches after a pawn shop finds trouble when an animatronic is brought in. It turns out Freddy's had been robbed and the animatronics were taken to different locations for sale. The other animatronics come to retrieve the one at the pawn shop and the kid and his friends get roped into adventure. Problems, a creative approach but felt a little too much like a boy and his animatronic. Too much after school adventure, not enough horror. Seemed like a good idea at the time. I'm so glad that he scrapped this because there wasn't enough horror. Because that is what I want in the movie. I want horror. I feel like, and as a person who just like last week watched the banana splits, I'm so glad they were focusing more on horror, right? Because a, a comedy horror film is definitely hit or miss at some point. So I'm really, really excited that he wanted more of a horror movie than a boy and his animatronic movie. The Cassidy screenplay. Diving deep, this screenplay packed in a lot of lore following the story of Cassidy one of the souls inside of Golden Freddy. Spanning multiple time periods following multiple characters and featuring lore from multiple games, this was pretty saturated, saturated to a fault. It may have been satisfying to the most hardcore fans, but it would have left the majority of people confused and lost. Hey wait, maybe this was the most accurate screenplay. Ultimately, more of a visual encyclopedia than a movie, this just wasn't satisfying even to me out. I know a lot of people would want a a, a gigantic encyclopedia of the lore for a movie. But you gotta think about this. The movie is being made not just for hardcore fans, right? The general public has to understand the story and what's going on. So if you throw in The Bite of 83, Five Missing Kids, uh, Serial Murder, William Afton, you know, Remnant, all that stuff, The Scooper, Baby, The Funtime Animatronics, Illusion Disc, you, you just cannot get the audience intrigued. That's just too much in the movie. So I'm so, so glad, again, that they are just focusing on, well, we're gonna find out later on, but I'm so glad they are focusing on what they are focusing on. Just a few more to go through the Miss Fit Kid screenplay. Single mom brings her kid to a new town, kid finds Freddy's, hilarity ensues. One of the problems in creating a modern day story with an old Freddy setting is finding a way to connect the protagonist to the restaurant, finding a reason for them to be there and finding a reason for them to stay. The problem here was that the reason for this kid to go to Freddy's and have misadventures was too contrived and too forced. Not a bad setup, but it just did not work. If I don't care about the characters, then there's a good chance no one else will either pass. This was going to be THE screenplay for a while, because it didn't have any serious flaws. I ultimately just decided it wasn't good enough though. This is very interesting, to think that the misfit kid, you know, a single mom bringing her kid to Freddy's, and hilarity ensues, sounds like it, it would be a bit more of a comedy than a horror, which again, I really want horror. It's interesting to think that that was going to be the go-to screenplay for the movie. Funnily enough, we will get into some time traveling ball pits soon, or at least some form of ball pit, so stay tuned for that. The Ghost Tracker screenplay. Basic setup, a group of amateur ghost trackers sneak into the abandoned Freddy's. Although a very common sense setup for this sort of movie, the problem again arose about how to give these characters a connection to Freddy's itself. What ended up happening was too much of the story went to their own backstories and their own hardships, and took the spotlight away from the story of Freddy's. A stronger connection between the protagonist and Freddy's was needed, lesson learned. Again, 
I'm super glad that they wanted to focus more on footies rather than the characters themselves. Second to last one, boys, the insane screenplay. Another Ghost Tracker variation, this one involved the fun time animatronics, underground ball pit tunnels, and a marionette out for revenge. As some other screenplays ventured too far into adventure, this one went too far into action. Too all over the place with way too many characters doing too many things. It is so, and I know I keep saying interesting, but that's the thing I say. It's so interesting to see just how different these screenplays were. You know, like this one has the Funtime animatronics, the marionette, and underground ball pit tunnels. I don't know why Scott is so obsessed with ball pits recently. <laughs> Maybe some like childhood trauma, I don't know. Another ghost tracker variation. Hmm. So maybe they like detect the remnant in the Funtime animatronics. I'm not really speculating much about these scraps screenplays just because we don't really need to because they're never gonna see the light of day. It went too far into action. Again, I wanna see a horror movie and this sounds a bit like, um, what's it called? Willy's Wonderland, the one with uh, Nicolas Cage, the action horror movie. I, I, I would have been interested to see where a action FNAF movie, like what action can you have in a FNAF movie, where would that go? I, I don't know, but again, we're moving on to the final screenplay. The Mike screenplay. Basic setup, hmm, this makes sense. Why didn't I think of this before? Problems, actually, this is a good mix. It has the best pieces from all the previous screenplays, not really any problems here. All the right characters, all the right motivations, all the right stakes. Verdict, yeah. We're going with this one. It's fun, it's scary, and it has a great central story. Just a little bit more before we hop into what I think the Mike screenplay is going to be about. Oh, right. So, on to the bad news. The bad news is that there won't be any more screenplays to add to this list since we are we're officially making the Mike screenplay. Filming starts in the spring. Smiley face emojicon. Because again, you can't have a Scott post without a few emojicons throughout it. Yeah, so the Mike screenplay. It's fun, it's scary, has a great central story, all the right characters, motivations, and stakes. This is what I want. A scary but enjoyable movie with the right characters, the right motivations, and the right stakes. Now, we don't have much to go off of besides the Mike screenplay. Mike, of course, we all know Michael Afton, the son of William Afton. The main protagonist, you could argue, in the FNAF franchise, the entire franchise. Now, because this, be this is being based off the games, I don't know how far we are going to get into the games. Because it was two years ago at this point when Scott said he wants to make three movies based off of FNAF 1, 2, and FNAF 3. I don't know if that still holds up. Because again, we've gone through so many scripts at this point, you know? Is he still sticking with the mic screenplay, but it's only FNAF 1? I don't know. Is it a, a character arc screenplay of Mike starting off when he's a little, little kid, little child, little baby boy, with his father making these characters, then he grows up, he goes to the FNAF 1 location, 2, 3, all of those locations, and then he finally burns in the fire. I feel like that would be a lot, so I don't think they're gonna do that one. Scott really likes the screenplay, so hopefully it doesn't, it's not like the other one where it just had way too many lore pieces in it. Again, I want some lore in the movie, I do, but I, again, they, they just cannot put too much in there because the, the general audience needs to know what is happening. A lot of people are gonna go because they are fans of FNAF. They know the games, they know the lore, but there's also gonna be the people that see, oh, a horror movie. I like horror movies, you know? So they, they gotta make the movie for everyone. People who are hardcore fans and people who just don't know FNAF at all. Now, of course, the big thing is that they are filming in the spring. This is so exciting. This means for the rest of the year, we're gonna get casting calls, I doubt they're gonna be on Voices.com because that's more voice acting rather than acting. So I'm guessing sites like IMDB and um, other sites like that, <laughs> that's the only one I can think of right now. I feel like we gotta keep a close eye on that. Also, follow Blumhouse, of course, stalk them, get as much info as we can. They did tweet out about this post, so I'm hoping that we can get just a little bit of news, you know, maybe like a few um, casting characters. And while we're on the topic of casting characters, I want to give my opinion on Jack Black being in the movie. The thing I hate most about modern movies is that they all try and put in just a bunch of celebrities. So it'd be just like, oh, I know Jack Black. He's in this movie. I want to go see it. I, uh, that's like my least favorite thing right now in movies is when they just get a bunch of celebrities to play the characters. 
I think having Jack Black in the movie would be fun. It would be entertaining. I don't want him as a main character just because this movie, Blumhouse and Scott don't seem like the type of people who would want a celebrity to be the main character. You know, I feel like that is a very cheap thing for companies to do. I think having him as like a janitor would be funny, just like a small little appearance throughout the movie. Um, a lot of people, a lot of FNAF YouTubers have been like, hey Scott, contact me, Jason, I want to be in the movie, I'll work for free. I wouldn't be surprised if like Matt, Darko, Mark are in the movie. I think that's as far as they'll go though. I mean, just saying, I, I have done some acting in the past, so Jason, Scott, hit me up. I will work for free, I'll just be background character, you don't need to pay me at all. <laughs> yeah, I think at maximum we'll get Mad Pat, Markiplier, Darko. I feel like those are just the main three people that really deserve to be in that movie. But again, do not want them as main characters. I, small cameos would be nice, like customers, pants in the background, that'd be cool. That's really it. Um, I kind of talked about all I wanted to talk about. I'm sorry this video was late, by the way, but hey. I'm done with the driving class, that means more time for videos, boys. Also, it's been like 24 hours since the post came out, and it already has 13,000 upvotes, so yeah, this was a big post. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye. Gregory, be still. I think she's found us.